So you can go. Our month is over. Sarah, I'm not leaving. Sarah! Sarah! Sarah, stop running. Sarah. Nelson, if you leave now, everything we had will be perfect forever. Sarah, life isn't perfect. While teenagers are experimenting with things that help them survive a broken heart and heal, some of their assumptions have already been proven by science. This is your host Amanda and today we learn the art of dealing with a breakup. Adolescence is the right time to be in love but lack of experience and self-control are here to stay and make it the toughest time for young lovers. After a bad romance, you can afford the wisdom of a psychology major and their advice will hopefully keep you away from more drama. Silly advice like go to a Slayer concert or invent dramatic memories about your ex, might someday be mainstream science. On the other hand, if many strategies used by broken-hearted teenagers didn't yet receive the status of a scientifically proven effective strategy in case of a broken heart, they seem to be approved by common sense instead. But as the scientists have this huge personal problem which consists of an unusual curiosity and disposable funds, they are trying to find out if any of their own teenage assumptions could be confirmed by research. Therefore, they subjected to further investigations three of these strategies for dealing with a romantic breakup. According to Psychology Today, Sandra Langslag and Michelle Sanchez of the University of Missouri, St. Louis, tested the following strategies of dealing with a broken heart. Negative reappraisal of the relationship. By focusing on the negative qualities of ex-partners, too clingy, too cheap, too old, etc. It is often possible to reduce love and feel better after a breakup. Alternatively, it can also help to think about the negative features of the relationship itself. It wasn't going anywhere. I'm not ready to get serious, etc. Unfortunately, this involves dwelling on negative thoughts that can make an individual feel worse, at least in the short run. In the long run, however, negative reappraisal can be an effective coping strategy. Reappraising the emotion itself. Another way to cope with a breakup is to learn to accept the emotions that come with it. This can include recognizing that post-breakup blues are an inevitable part of a breakup. It can also mean admitting that you still have feelings toward an ex and learning to accept these feelings without passing judgment on yourself. Distraction For many, the simplest and easiest way to deal with a breakup is to throw themselves into some activity that fills their time. Whether by working harder and longer than usual, starting a new hobby, or binge watching old movies, distraction can help people curb rumination and brooding, at least in the short run. While distraction is more of a short-term coping strategy, it can still help control the blues long enough to start moving on. During each trial, 
Participants were briefly presented with a question or statement to stimulate one of the coping strategies being studied. For the negative reappraisal condition, they were presented with the questions about negative qualities in their ex-partner. What is an annoying habit of your ex? What is something disrespectful your ex did? Or what is something mean your ex said? In the reappraisal of love feelings condition, prompts included statements such as Many people still love their ex. It's okay to love someone you're no longer with. Or loving someone is normal. The distraction condition included questions such as What is your favorite song and why? Or who is your best friend and why? As expected, results show the strong correlation between the amount of love participants felt for their ex, and how upset they were by their breakup. In weighing the individual strategies, negative reappraisal appeared to be especially useful in decreasing love feelings, though it also tended to make people feel worse, at least in the short run. Despite this disadvantage, it was the strategy participants reported being most likely to use after a breakup. The other techniques didn't seem to work as well, not only did love reappraisal fail to change love feelings, but participants remained skeptical about its value in dealing with heartache. Distractions seemed to help participants deal with emotional pain, but it did little to actually reduce love feelings. More important, it wasn't an effective long-term strategy, since it deals more with avoiding negative feelings rather than learning to overcome them. Based on their findings, Langslag and Satch has concluded that negative reappraisal and distraction were the strategies people were most likely to use after a breakup. Being able to deal with romantic feelings, wanted or not, is a skill which can be learned like any other. Along with dealing with the inevitable breakups across the lifespan, this kind of the learning can be a vital part of staying emotionally healthy. We hope this video presentation has been an opportunity to improve your emotional skills and will make your future breakups a little easier. We'll see you in the next one. Until then, don't forget to be the best version of yourselves.